Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, July 22nd, 2022. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Jonah Booker for his usual Friday visit. All right, a lot to get into as usual, my man. Let's start with what's on the banner right now. How much will Ohio State's defense improve this year under Jim Knowles? Very young last year, but still terrible. Um, so what can we expect at a year one out of Jim Knowles? I think it's definitely going to be vastly improved, Dave. You're talking about a defense last year that was 59th nationally in total defense. The passing defense last year was one of the worst passing secondaries in the Big Ten as well as college football. I think they finished 96th in, in pass defense, giving up 244, 245 yards a game. So I definitely think you're going to see a defense that is really improved. Um, a defense that's going to not be so simplistic to where the way they were structured last year, they just lined up and play. Any Anybody, any offensive coordinator was able to scheme them up. You look what Tulsa was able to do with them, you name it. And the defense this year, I think with Jim Knowles, they're going to dictate. They're going to be more aggressive. He's going to bring a sense of calm to the actual defense. And more importantly, I think the secondary is going to be vastly improved, especially with them being able to get their head around to actually find the football. All right, let's get into this because I've talked about this a lot. So obviously we know Ohio State's offense is going to be elite. And by elite, I think it's going to be the best offense in the country. And I'm not, I know I'm not breaking news there. Um, so let's presume that that is the case. So Ohio State has the best offense in the country, if not the best, the second best or whatever, probably the best. What? How good does the defense need to be? I keep saying like top forty is kind of my like baseline. Like if they could be a top forty total defense, top forty scoring defense, along with an elite offense, that that recipe screams national championship to me. Or do do the Buckeyes need to be better on that defensively, Jay Book? I, I think they need to be at least in the top twenty five, Dave. I think that. Um, with the offense, we definitely, as you mentioned, we know the offense is going to put up a significant amount of points. But I think the top 25 defense keeps them from having to be in shootouts. If you're in the top 40 defense, that means there's going to be games to where you're giving up a lot of yards, potentially a lot of points. But you're also going to have games where the defense plays outstanding. I want a more consistent defense. I think top 25 in order to win a national championship, in order to beat Georgia, in order to beat Alabama, it has to be better because we know Alabama will have weapons. They will have the Heisman quarterback. They will have guys that will match up with Ohio State athletically. In the Big Ten, you're going to run across some teams that just they don't match up athletically. But if you're talking about winning a national championship, you're going to have to go through Georgia. You're going to have to go through Alabama. And in order to do that, the defense has to be playing at a high clip. And I think, yes, top 40, I think that gets you into the Big Ten championship and gets you a seat at the table in the playoffs. But in order to be able to host that trophy up, it has to be a little bit better than the top 40 defense. I will say a top 25, even a top 20 defense because – at this point, Dave, you look at the overall composite of talent that's um, co- that that's on this roster. It's second to none to Alabama. I mean, at this point, we as fans need to start holding Ryan Day and that defense more accountable. Like we've been so accustomed to the defense being so bad over the last several years, we're in the mindset of I just take anything that's something respectable. But if you look at the talent that is on this roster, it should be it should be holding them to a top 15 type of defense. But I get what you're saying. Let's take a baby steps the first year under Jim. Hopefully he can build them into a year in, year out type of defense. But the, the reality is that this is the most talented defense when it comes to star power behind Alabama, behind Georgia. So we should be expecting them to be playing at a high level. I'll say this right now. If they're a top 25 defense, I'd bet the house, this house, on Ohio State winning the national championship. If they're a top (laughs) 25 defense, this offense, lock it up. Um, Man, I hope you're right. And listen, like, I I think you might be right because here's why. Like, 
We saw what Jeff Halfley did. Like, they were a disaster defensively in 2018. And listen, the 2019 defense will be more talented than the 2022 defense. I get that. But I like the talent on this 2022 defense with JT Tumolau, Jack Sawyer, all these guys that are a year older, Tyleek Williams, Denzel Burke, Jordan Hancock. We go on and on. 2019 was more, was obviously more talented. Chase Young, Jeffrey Okuda, on and on. But they were the number one total defense in the country that year. They might have fallen to yeah. number two after, after the Clemson game. But, like, we don't need them to be that good. But, man, you might be right. Like, if they're top 25, top 20, look the hell out. Like, I just want them to be, at the worst, top 40. And I might be yeah. okay. But you're right. If they're top 25, top 20 or better, get out of here. Ohio State's winning the match. I'll, I'll put up to number three, Dave, because top 25 defense, in my mind, gives C.J. Stroud and the offense – three more possessions a game. So if you're giving that offense three more opportunities to go put up points, because you look at what the defense was doing last year, you know, 59th, as we mentioned in the country, there were times where the offense were controlling the clock. The opposing offense was controlling the clock and they were doing that to try to keep our offense off the field because the defense couldn't, they couldn't get off the field. They couldn't get stops. So if you're giving CJ Stroud, and Ryan Day, three to four extra possessions, that's huge because it's going to put a significant amount of stress on the opposing defenses to say, hey, in order for you to stay in this game, you're going to have to try to either outscore this offense or try to do a ball control type of situation like Michigan did. And even still, you talk about that Michigan game, you know, the offense still went for – 400 plus they just struggled in the red zone but with all of the things that people want to talk about with Michigan the offense still moved the football if they were able to give CJ Stroud three to four extra possessions in that Michigan game I think they really turned the heat up because there was at one point when he got that holding that run call back from holding Ohio State was low-key starting to kind of creep back into that game as bad as they were playing. That was just, a bad call, too. That was on Nick Petit Ferrer. I, yeah. think Ojab, Ojab, I get it from the referee standpoint, as, as much as I hate to defend him, because it looked like holding it maybe at live speed, but the guy slipped. Ojabo slipped. Right. They called NPF for holding. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. But I was going to say, you, you, you look at that game, and as bad as people want to talk about how Michigan dominated – Ohio State was quietly starting to creep back into that game. The offense was moving the football. They were starting to get into a rhythm. We just couldn't get off the field on defense. If if they would if they would have turned that around and and forced Michigan to go three and out, look out because at that point the offense was starting to get rolling. Even in the Oregon game, I, I had yeah. to like look this back up because I was doing a uh, a story for the site and and doing something for the Notre Dame site as well, like just a back and forth with the Ohio State Notre Dame game. And they were asking me about the Oregon game last year, and I had to look it up because I remember thinking I'm pretty sure Ohio State outgained Oregon last year in that game. And I looked it up. Yeah, I was right. I forgot how, by how much Ohio State outgained Oregon by over a hundred yards in that game. Right, but Oregon. Didn't screw the pooch when they were in the red zone. They didn't turn the ball over. They were good on third and fourth down. Ohio State only had one turnover, but it was a costly one late. I don't even put that on CJ. Like it, at that point, all the pressure was on him. Ohio State was terrible on third down and fourth down in that game. There were two of five on fourth down. Something crazy like I think it was like five of 16 on third down. And if, listen, and as you know, if you're two of five on fourth down, that's basically like three turnovers right there. So, yeah. um, yeah, man. I mean, if this defense can be good, whatever our definition of that is, look out. All right, let's get into some fun questions from uh, some of our Bucknut subscribers. I love this. So he's, we have a uh, Bucknut subscriber saying the experience in the WAC seems great for Ohio State's players. We can confirm it is. But the food and all the activities and just everything they get to do, like, you know, on their own time in the WAC, how does that compare, Jonah, to when you were a college football player yeah. at Ohio University? It doesn't compare, Dave. I mean, yeah, it doesn't compare. You're in the MAC. I mean, for the MAC, you was a lot of people in the MAC would they thought Ohio University had a little bit more cash than uh, some of the other MAC schools. Like our facilities, you know, they were decent, but we didn't have a training table, man. We was in, we was eating in the dining halls with the normal students, just 
<laughs> eating, filling our plates up. There was no training tables there. There was no special meals. There was no going to go get steaks and all that stuff. I mean, if we got some some chicken wings or something on Wednesday night in the dining halls, man, we were pumped up. But it, it doesn't compare. These guys are living the great life um, over there at Ohio State. I mean, they should. You look at the revenue that those guys are bringing in, and a lot of people got mad at me for saying that this – Fox Network and the money that the Big Ten is going to be receiving, that was on the backs of Ohio State. Because you look at the Big Noon, Ohio State, they were the ones who jump-started the Big Noon. You look at the amount of times Ohio State has been on there, and it's been very successful for Fox. And because of that, the Big Ten is able to parlay that into $100 million per school. But a significant amount of that cash was on the backs of Ohio State having to carry the conference banner. So those guys deserve everything that they're getting over there. You just made me think of another topic here. I'm going to put right up there. So here we go. Um, let's look at this one. So um, can you imagine if Ohio State <laughs> – um, here, let me, let me put this up here. Um, can you imagine if Ohio State demanded – non-equal TV rights. So right yeah. now, like Northwestern gets the same as Ohio State, Purdue, everybody in Illinois, the fighting Brett Bielema's. Can you imagine if Ohio State said, you know what, we don't even need like twice as much as, as Northwestern, even if we're worth twice as much. We need more. Like, what would the Big Ten even do? Now, maybe it would be an empty threat. I know Ohio State doesn't want to leave the Big Ten. And it's as much as we're talking about football, it's more than football. It's academics and all that. I right. get that. But Ohio State does drive this. Like, what would the Big Ten even do? Like, it'd be kind of funny to see it play out. It'll never happen, but I'd, I'd kind of like to see it play out, though. Yeah, it, it would be funny. I mean, a lot of a lot of people look at the Big Ten and think like, oh, my goodness, you know, everybody's going to be making money hand over fist. And that is because of the way Jim Delaney structured it, where everybody gets equal pay. You know, we can we all see it, Dave. We all know that Ohio State – is way more valuable than your Northwesterns, your Rutgers, your Maryland's. They're making the same amount of cash. But, yeah, I, I do wish that Ohio State would flex their muscles a little bit more. I think that Ohio State plays a little too nice sometimes with the Big Ten. Uh, I think that if they kind of went the, the, route, the route of Alabama or your Texas or your USC's when it comes to their conference of demanding a little bit more, and it doesn't necessarily need to be more money, but I just think that Ohio State needs to be the, the top voice in the conference when it comes to certain situations. And I feel like Gene Smith, you know, he's, he's definitely one of your most powerful ADs in the country. But I just think that Ohio State plays too nice sometimes. They need to flex their power just a little bit more, even if it's just getting some form of edge over Michigan or your other schools that are getting the same equal treatment as the Buckeyes. Here's a question from a Bucknut subscriber here. Here, let me like, uh, here we go. Bucknut subscriber wants to know, Jay Book, which player that Ohio State recruited and barely missed out on hurts the most? So some examples he gave Jordan Battle. Caleb Downs, if he doesn't pick Ohio State as it's trending now, like what can you think of a player that you thought Ohio State might get and then they didn't get that really burns you? It has to be Jordan Battle, Dave. I mean, you look how bad the safety play has been over the last couple of years. Okay. He was a guy that was committed to Ohio State, and you look at it and the way he's playing at Alabama, all American type of guy, he's going to be a high draft pick. I think he is the one that really hurts the most. I know a lot of people think that. Uh, Ohio State is trailing Alabama with Caleb Downs. If they miss on him, you know, I, I, I think that's going to definitely hurt. And I really want to see Caleb Downs in the Buckeye uniform because those are the type of recruiting battles that you need to win in order to grab that crown off the SEC's head. But Jordan Battle is definitely the one that really sticks out to me who was a miss because if you have a Jordan Downs, you don't have some of the safety play. I'm sorry. If you have a Jordan battle, you don't have some of the safety play that you had in the past. Yeah, I hear you. You know what? Like, it's funny if they didn't land Travion Henderson, maybe and Evan Pryor in, in the 2021 class, I might say B. John Robinson because he's fantastic. And he committed to the Buckeyes, not like as publicly as Jordan battle did, but like he committed to Tony Alford and the Buckeyes, like silent verbal and then like changed his mind. And he's fantastic. But 
I ain't mad about it. I love Travion Henderson. I love like Evan Pryor. And there's no way Travion Henderson would be here if um, B. John Robinson was here. All right. Um, we have another question. I mean, how much voluntary work are Ohio State's players doing this offseason? Um, we're not really privy to that. I mean, but I would say a lot. They're very motivated, Jay Book. When I'm over there, like, you know, and we'll be at Big Ten Media Days next week in Indianapolis, then camp's going to kick off the following week. I'm telling you, man, in spring, I got the vibe of a team that is highly motivated and focused. I love it. I mean, and easy to see based on what happened last year. Yeah. We don't, like you said, we, we're not privy to that. Every once in a while, you get a, a glimpse of it from some of the guys on their Instagram or or uh, their Twitter or something like that. You see Marvin Harrison Jr. He's over there putting in a ton of work. He's out there shooting the jugs with the football up in the air 60 yards and running to go catch it, which freak is show. Yeah, it's a freak show. So you know Marvin's over there. And, and if Marvin's over there, then you better believe some of those other guys are over there. I mean, you look at C.J. Stroud. He's, old, he's down there working with uh, NFL quarterbacks with Justin Fields and Deshaun Watson and – uh Malik Willis so you see what he's doing so I'm sure that those guys aren't just sitting around they've been doing some work on their own yeah they're highly motivated I mean I talked to like uh, parents of players sources close to the team it's like everything is always like you know high intensity here this they've ratcheted up like it's just they're pissed off about what happened last year and uh I love it. I love it. This is as talented of as an Ohio State roster as I can remember. I love the coaching staff. Look out. I know you're national championship or yeah. bust. You've talked me into that. You know, <laughs> Alabama is a beast too. So, but yeah. I, whatever. It seems like it's a two team race. So let's just go national championship or bust. All right. We have a final question from a Bucknell subscriber. This is a fun one. What is your favorite dessert? Uh, anything after Ohio State beats Michigan is mine. Go ahead, Jay Book. <laughs> My favorite dessert is I'm a strawberry cheesecake fan, Dave. I love me a, um, a nice cheesecake, um, ice cream. I love some ice cream. But if I had to choose, if I can give me a, a an awesome strawberry cheesecake, I'll take it all day, every day. You know what else? I mean, I, again, anything after Ohio State beats Michigan or wins the national title, any dessert's yeah. good with me. You know what I really love is like, milkshakes i love chocolate <laughs> milkshakes like, i love yeah. them i love them I, I can't drink them but i love them i drink them every once in a while i love right. chocolate milkshakes. those extra thick chocolate milkshakes sign me up for those all right sign j book up for being awesome on podcast uh you see why he is uh highly loved around here great stuff jonah really appreciate your time my friend thank you to j book thank you to all the listeners and viewers out there we appreciate that very much if you like the show like subscribe Give us a five-star review depending on what platform you're watching or listening on. Thanks again to J-Book. Thanks to all of you for tuning in. We appreciate it very much. Hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend.